Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, running for the Popper Party of Ontario in the Sudbury Provincial by-election for February the 5th. And this is the debate from uh, January the 29th that was held in Sudbury. All the candidates were invited by the Chamber of Commerce, unlike the CBC corruption that went on. So I'll have more to say about the prostitutes at the end of the video. I'm John the Engineer Termel. And this is my 85th election. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records. Same page as Her Majesty the Queen. Didn't go to my head because in the American version they put me on the same page as the world's biggest bagel. So why do I do it? Why do I keep running? Well, I'll pay my tax for army and police to handle strife. I'll pay my tax for doctors, nurses who protect my life. I'll pay my tax for all engaged, repairing road and sewer. Oh, by the way, the reporters call this shouting. I'll pay my tax for social servants helping out the poor. I'll even pay my tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying tax for interest on debt. Now, matter of fact, this was me being arrested, picketing the IMF World Bank. Immorality of interest led me out to police station in 1981. 30 years before the Occupy people figured out who were the bad guys. I was out there alone. Well, the solution to our problem was done in Argentina. Look for Argentine solution. When the banks went bust and the government couldn't pay, the union said, no layoffs. We'll take small denomination provincial bonds in our pay if we can use them for hydro taxes, medical and licenses, so everybody else will take them too. Alternate currency, rather than none. No layoffs, maximum employment, within five years, all foreign debt paid off. So, same thing with when I ran for Mayor Branford. I wanted to pay people with bus tickets, kids, to shovel the snow. And they were all going to do it. So, last but not least, they have a lot of fun. Super loser fails again, was the headline in the Hamilton election 1996. But let's is a software that does the interest-free banking. And one month after that, I said anyone can do it. The Hamilton self-help group started up a Hamilton Let's. Thank, thank you, Mr. Termel, uh, Mr. Waddell. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, 10 billion out of 260 billion is only 4%. Let's go back to the good old days of Pierre Trudeau with 22% in the 80s when I was picketing the Bank of Canada every Thursday. The bankers are crook sign. How many of you people remember your parents moving out with a lot of crying? Millions got evicted at 22% interest rates. What happens if interest rates go back to Pierre Trudeau's 22% from four? It ain't 10 billion, it's 50 billion. Then you're gonna hear the screaming instead of just 10. And what if Justin gets in and beats his dad and gives us 25%? Worse. None of them wanna do anything about it. Now, let's, that's the software that runs the time bank. How do I get 20 nominators to nominate me for Parliament in a half an hour or an hour off the street? I say, I want to be a candidate in the election and I want to talk to them about the LETS, which allows unemployed and poor single parents to log on what nights are free to babysit and double duty babysit each other's kids and pay each other with one hour bills even if they're broke. Get a night off, maybe less suicides. Okay, where do I sign? That's how fast I can get nominators. I probably end up with more nominators than I get voters. Because they hear the pitch directly. Well, I want you to be able to go to the Bank of Canada, log on to the Bank of Canada computer, borrow Bank of Canada new chips from the Let's program, pay all your mortgages and interest bearing debts, and after that all payments go against principal. Someday you're out of debt. <laughs> talking debt. How do you pay 11 when you only borrowed 10 and they only printed 10? So if, if we're wanting to get back to what the question was, which was on balancing the budget, so here's... He's going to get the 11th. So here, here's, here's what's been said. So we have uh, Mr. Tremel, 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds? Yes. Hmm. Well, it's a shortage of money again. How would King Henry have done it? King Henry took a stick of wood. He printed 10 pounds of gold on it. 
split the stick in two. This part was the king's chip with which he said, go pay people to build me a bridge, and this was the stub. And at the end of the year, he counted up how many tallies he spent to build the bridge, and then at tax time, he said, I want this number of tallies back as fast as the bridge depreciated, and they better tally up with the stubs, which is where the word tally comes from. King Henry I ran a government, interest-free, uncounterfeitable money system. We could do. Thank you, Mr. Trudeau. That's four models I've given you so far. You won't remember any of them. Thank you, Mr. Trudeau. Une fois fort, c'est pas assez. Ça prend un cerveau fort avec des bonnes idées. Right? A good, strong voice and enough. You need a brain to go with it. So, now, excuse my stentorian voice. You know, I'm bringing a strong voice with me, but it isn't what counts. Unfortunately, the reporters are offended, keep accusing me of shouting and bad-mouthing me. But I like adding a bit of emotion and loudness. It doesn't hurt anybody. So, oui, je le vois fort. Je la le cerveau fort. Grade 17 in science, 100% in physics, A in fourth year electrical engineering. Anybody beat that? I'm the only science graduate on this table. The others are all low tech. That's why they might have strong voices, but no strong brain. <laughs> Question for Dr. Robinson. Whoa, whoa, don't we all get a chance to answer? No, we don't, sir. We have a time limited uh, opportunity on each of these questions, and uh, if you put up your hand uh, during the debate session, we'll recognize you. Thank you. Well, I don't care how they tax me, I care how they waste it. One. Two. How did Harold Ballard build Maple Leaf Gardens in the middle of the Great Depression when he had no money? How did he finance it? I was going to tell you, and you could have done it the same way, and now you've got to go look up how Harold Ballard built Maple Leaf Gardens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When he came from the McIntyre mine, he didn't build it. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Bill. Um, I believe all the candidates here are in agreement that we need a PET scanner here in Sudbury and in northeast of Ontario. I can pay for it. Uh, you know what? The, the, the important fact is... Excuse me! That's not fair! I came here to provide my answers to the voters and you have no way Mr. to exclude me. Mr. Chermel, uh, as I was saying to the panel, I was considering opening up this question for a further minute of debate. But I'd ask for some decorum. Um, I'd ask for some decorum on the issue. You may have uh, a short response. I'll keep it short. <laughs> I want to finance the PET scan. I want to finance the hospital. I pay all the workers with Maple Leaf hockey tickets. Oh, oh wrong example. That was Maple Leaf Gardens. I pay them with hospital credits. In Japan, for Ryukipu, 60% of the population can donate their services to the hospital in exchange for services back. Barter for health care services. Same as hockey tickets. Seven different examples of how local currencies could help. Thank you, Mr. Termel. I uh, Ms. Brown. <coughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Mr. Termel has taken the wind out of your sails. <laughs> I think I'll close this question and move on to the next question. Uh, Mr. Termel, briefly, and then Ms. Brown. All right. I'm the great Canadian gambler. Why would I steal when I can win it off you fair and square? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Brown. Last two examples. When Russia crashed in the 90s, 750 states and cities issued and paid their employees with bond bucks, bond rubles. And 25,000 corporations issued their own McDonald's rubles, Ford rubles, GM rubles, uncounterfeitable, still illegal, and it worked. Et finalement, pour les créditistes qui écoutent, ce sont des crédits sociaux. Je parle des crédits sociaux chaque fois. Utilise des papiers sans intérêt, des crédits sociaux. C'est ça que j'explique au monde qui comprennent jamais, comme ils l'ont jamais compris auparavant non plus. So, for those of you who didn't get it, don't worry, Jesus said you'll be forever hearing without hearing. And see what I see.
your understanding when it comes to interest on money. Check it out. You got to go to my website to see my Bible poetry, but it's all there. Jesus said you'd never get it, and guess what? I found he's right. <laughs> So those were the highlights from the debate that dealt with my interventions, which Mary Kuhn had said called a few tedious disruptions and nonsensical contributions from the fringe candidates. Didn't even mention my name. And uh, of course, there were the other reports. It was a big Facebook discussion started by Jessica Pope going actual question when should we bar candidates from all candidates debates listening to the homophobia at the Sudbury Chamber of Commerce debate not fun so yeah there was one guy who you know bad mouthed the gays and he got well booed and that was enough of a punishment I think you don't need to ban him if idiots want to come and talk let them be booed um, David Blanche Dubois wrote John Trumel just likes the attention. Can't even spell my name. CBC tried to address it, and then we were treated to a 10-minute rant from Trumel. Yeah, I ranted because CBC tried to address the problem of Trumel by excluding me from the debate. And I ranted, yeah. That's Dubois' ideas. And he thinks Let's Time Bank is just for attention. I just run and talk about Let's just for the attention. Well, yeah, I'm pretty proud of having been involved in the production of engineering of Let's over the years. But not attention for me, but attention for Let's, right? And, of course, Matakari, a multimedia journalist at the Sudbury Star, added, when their inclusion doesn't serve democracy. Gee, sometimes you got to exclude people so you can serve democracy. This is reporters thinking. I covered last night's debate, and I really believe only the top five should have been invited. Well, you watch the real debate, and you judge how exciting and how informative listening to the top five candidates are. But my standard challenge is, when you listen to the other candidates at the end of the debate, try to write down something you remember them having said. And when you realize you can't remember one thing they said, then it'll dawn on you. They didn't say anything, though they spoke a lot. It's called political rhetoric. I want this, I want that, you should have this, this should be good, these are my priorities, I'd like to do this. None of it actually means anything at all, and yet people want to hear more, like Matakari does. Matthew Gohier's Twitter, where he just basically said, Okay, Matthew Gohier asks, Will Termel be less turbulent? Gee, he never answered the question. <laughs> Other one, Les candidats marginaux. Uh, et John Termel participes ce soir. So we got to participate tonight. That's big news in Sudbury. And we're th they're thanking John Termel for the comic relief in the debate. And of course, he's trying to make it sound like people were laughing at me rather than laughing at my jokes, right? That's what they, he didn't repeat and explain any of the jokes that made him laugh. Just that I provided comic relief. I was the clown. <laughs> so those are the reports of the Sudbury Media on my program about Let's Time Banking. Now I want you to remember the line about the babysitters who might not commit so many suicides if they had a night off because someone else was babysitting their kids double duty once in a while, right? That means those upcoming suicides will be the responsibility of the Sudbury prostitutes who didn't tell them about time banking, right? So, statistically speaking, the great Canadian gambler says they're going to get blood on their hands, and I can't wait to see their judgment day when they try and get into heaven with the victims of what they did because they didn't tell them how they could have saved themselves. Nine times I gave examples of how community currencies could solve our problems, and not once did any of the prostitutes relay my message. So, voters are going to the Sudbury polls having no clue what I'm about, having no clue what they were offered, and someday when they find out, I hope they're mad.
Bye.